Okay, in the last video, we looked at how uh, we created an IP for a 8-bit adder. We synthesized it and packaged it using Vivado's IP packager. Now, in this video, we'll look at how to use the IP that was just packaged. Okay, for that, let's create a new project. Uh, create a new Vivado project. Let me call this uh, new adder IP integrated. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, Will be a RTL project, but this time I'm not going to specify any sources. For the boards, I have the jet board. So close all other existing projects and I have my new project. In this case, I want to create a new block design. So call it design one. Let me refresh my IP repository. So what I did, what I want to do is click on IP settings which brings up the IP window and I want to add the repository that I just had so under Vivado if I go to uh, so I should have under this folder when I do refresh all I should have every single adder that I just created uh, I believe my last adder that I created was this called my IP adder 8-bit. Uh, I'll say OK to that. Uh, so I've created the IP repo. So I want to do add my adder. Here's my adder that I just created. Uh, it has a slave port, a clock port, and a reset port, which are the default. I want to control this using the zinc processor, so let me add the zinc. Here's my zinc. Uh, I'm going to run block automation. I'm going to run connection automation. So everything got put together uh, properly, uh, automatically. There's a reset circuitry. There's a clock circuitry. Here's a reset system. Uh, here's the AXI interconnect. Uh, on the Zinc platform, I don't need all these additional ports like Ethernet, so I'm just going to disable them. Uh, so on the GPIO, I, I do want the UART, but I don't need the Enet. I don't need USB. I don't need the SD. I want to be able to cope communicate by UART so I'll leave that alone uh, as well as some under peripheral IOs so, okay so here you go all right and I also have the timer active right now so let me go disable that as well since I'm not using the timers uh, timer controllers right here unchecked all of that so I now have basically everything that's connected I can regenerate the layout so that it looks a little more nicer uh, let me save this and validate that it passes the design rule checks and there are nothing uh, there's nothing wrong with it so validation was successful so on the sources let's go ahead and do uh, generate the output products so what that does is takes these blocks and creates the individual Verilog for them. That's creating the output product so that we can synthesize and implement them later. And this should take a few minutes, depend up to a few minutes, depending on how big the design is. Say OK. All right. Next thing we want to do is generate a SDL wrapper for this entire system and we've created the wrapper so the next thing now is to basically run synthesis implementation and generate the bitstream so i'm going to hit generate bitstream and let it continue so this will go to the synthesis implementation and the generation of the bitstream so it looks like the synthesis implementation of the bitstream writing is completed so here's the right bitstream complete messes uh, next thing to do is to export the hardware so let's export hardware make sure you include bitstream say okay uh, 
next we want to start working on the software part so launch SDK say okay 